the NFL to Hollywood to fatherhood. Join me as I tackle my next journey in life, becoming Hollywood's next action star. Reworkout powwow, right when I started, my boy's coming in, so that'll elongate things a little bit. What's up, Bobby? Oh, you got your Woody shirt on and you got Mr. Woody, that's cool. I got a snake in my boots. Yeah. Um, shirts and shorts work out today. That'll be fun. Uh, again, just coined that term yesterday. Uh, I'm not wearing a t-shirt right now because it is uh, colder than, well, I'll skip that one today. But Jack Frost's nipping at my nips today, I'll tell you that much. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is start with arms. I'll hit a little neck in the warm-up. You don't really need to see that. There's not too much fun with that. I've showed you that before. Um, start with arms, then go and do some calves. Let's do it. Yeah, that's Mario, bud. That's right. You like you know, you know why I got that one, buddy? Because Daddy's been watching Mario and playing Mario since he was a kid, and so it's really important and nostalgic to me. But I got that specific poster because we have watched that Mario movie so many times. So that's super, super special to me. Yeah, sure thing, pal. That's Toad. Yeah. Bowser. Bowser. Who's your favorite? The princess. The princess? She's super sweet, huh? Yeah, I want to hug her. You want to give her a big hug? Yeah. You start with arms, and this is going to be more of like a big pump day than it is like a strength going heavy on an easy bar curl day. Um, I get a few exercises in on the arms. I'm thinking I'm going to do just alternating dumbbell curls, go to alternating hammer curls to a... Uh, single arm dumbbell standing preacher curl uh, and mix triceps in between all of those, you know, V-bar push downs, uh, underhanded push downs and uh, behind the neck dumbbell. I like that. Thanks, pal. You're a great son. Um, all that to say, I'm going to get a nice pump day on the arms and uh, do a few exercises on the calves to finish. All right, I'm going to start off with forearms. I'm still really cold, uh, hoping that this will pump some blood into everything because it's frigid in here. So um, I'm going to start with a reverse easy bar curl, go straight into some wrist curls seated, and then into some grip squeezers. I'll show you. <laughs> I don't know if you all can hear this song, but... My son is in here, not in frame, listening to Oompa Loompa music. What do you mean when you got on arm sweet? Uh, on these reverse curls, think about not having your elbows all the way down, but in front of you really isolates and targets that brachialis muscle, which is right here. Makes you look like... Um, you got those serial killer forearms. It's great. All right. I'm going to lean over here. Sit down on a bench. Forearm about halfway over the knee. Oh, simply curl them up. Control it down. Hmm. Ah. 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 Mm. Mm. Uh. Uh. Then go straight into a grip crusher, burn it out on each side. I'll start on my right. Actually, uh, these are apparently 150 pounds of force. Uh. Trying to touch the metal. Uh. Ah. 
That's just a picture, bud. I gotta finish my set here. Here. Ah, uh, can only get ooh, five reps touching those metals together. Mmm. Mmm. in that left one. I don't know what it's from. I felt a nice burn in this forearm, my left forearm today, which is great. So I always try to milk it for all it's worth because it's really hard for me to get a good burn in this left forearm because of just a lot of wrist injuries I've had in this left wrist. I have that also in my right quad, right leg in general because of all the knee injuries. I don't know what that is if it's the injuries kind of shut down certain muscles and they lose their connection in some ways and so it's really hard to stimulate them and so they don't really get, they don't get that like kind of lactic acidy burn that you get in, a, in the other muscles which bugs me because I want to get it worked but it's just like certain things are shut down a little bit. Uh, like on my right leg, when I squeeze, you know, this left quad, you know, all these muscles start to burn after a little bit. And I just can't get that to happen in my VMO, my vastus lateralis. Only one is the uh, medialis muscle. Or wait, what is this one called? The, uh, that one right there, anyhow. Anyways, if you've got a fix for it, that'd be super sweet. Done with the forearm circuit. Let's move on to the buys and tries. <sighs> All right. So between my front and back neck and after the back, I'm going to come over here, add a little layer into this neck program that I've shown you in the past um, to get more of the rotation from the side without having to lay on my side and put a plate on my head and tweak my neck. Put this around uh, the front of my head, attach it around the base of the rack, step out a little bit till there's tension and it feels like, okay, just holding an isometric here is gonna be a little work. Turn right, turn left, and I'm just gonna do that till I get a good burn, good pump going in the neck. I learned this from my good friend, James Peratt, uh, watching one of his posts. We're actually like childhood friends. We've known each other since elementary, same hometown. And uh, he's a total stud. He's actually got another ultra marathon coming up where they're gonna make it into a rad documentary. He can deadlift over 500 pounds. I think it's like 550 or something. And uh, I think he ran like 100 miles or something crazy in the same day. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he's a heck of an athlete. Uh. <laughs> Oof. All right, time to hit these, these arms. You gotta take the long sleeve off. Shirts and shorts muscles, baby, come on. So, at least I got the neck and the, uh, the forearms in. 
so you can get 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 those pencils out of there. You know, if you if you're 230 pounds, you can't be rocking your original 170 pound neck and you're sitting your head on a pencil. No good. Get your neck going. Fifteen at forties. I uh, just went to go to the bathroom real quick and came back into the garage, and the whole thing is torched with farts. Uh, I've got Satan farts today because of all the nonsense I ate before bed last night to just get my calories in. <laughs> it's pretty rough. Okay, but I there's a part of me that kind of likes it because I know it's mine, so I trust it. When I never mind. I'm alternating dumbbell curls. <laughs> To V bar push downs. I like V bars because you can really load it up a little bit more than, say, a rope. And it uh, feels like more of a natural movement for my elbows and uh, better activation than, say, a straight bar for me. Oh. <clears throat> Something I'm noticing right now while doing it. Uh, when I get to that bottom position, I flex my abs really hard. I don't know if that's just activating more muscles, but it makes the weight bounce up there easier. Ooh. Oh. Just an anecdote from my personal human experience. I know I act a little aloof uh, at times about some of the science behind things, but the truth is I've been lifting for uh, two decades, so a lot of stuff has stuck with me. I may not be the best at explaining every little thing, nor do I find it super necessary, because I think a lot of people get caught up in that stuff and keep it, they see it as obstacles, as in, oh, there's no point in even, even doing this because I'm not going to activate my triceps well enough. It's just, just mash some weights around and you're going to grow. Don't worry about all that nitty gritty. You got to get in there and stop seeing all these hurdles. Uh, but that being said, the best thing that you can possibly do, one of the best things in the weight room you can do, in my opinion, is put away, you know, traditionally, a, you know, a squat workout should look, you know, or a leg workout should start with squats and then this and that and extensions uh, or for any body part. Listen to your body, really feel, try to become aware. Oh my gosh, this, even though this is like a weird exercise, it really feels like it activates uh, my chest and I get really sore from it, I get a great pump. Man, I'm growing, I'm getting stronger. That is the best thing you can do in the weight room. Uh, make little tweaks, see how it feels on your body. Um, do what's best for your body, because, you know, uh, like I was just saying, like a V bar may work great for me and not for others. A straight bar is better, or vice versa. There is no universal one thing across everybody's different structures and anatomy. So uh, you just keep doing you. And um, also understand, understand the basics because it's important because there's a reason that a lot of the basics work, you know, um, progressive overload, all those things. But I think all of that is just to say, like, don't let everybody do your thinking for you. Listen to your body and trust your gut a little bit when you're in there. Hey, this is working for me. I don't care what everybody else says. You don't need somebody's permission of having read research papers to get after it and to make gains. Uh, touch these fifties up a little bit. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Uh, phones in my
my side pocket on my left side. I keep clicking it on each rep and it's stressing me out a little bit. But it will not keep me from gains because the truth is that screen's already cracked several which ways. And I just don't have it in me to schedule out in any of my days to go get it fixed or to get a new phone for that matter. I've been putting that off for two years just because just another thing, you know, throw it on the list. Let it add up. Ah, lost count. Ah, these are called ADD working sets. Ah. Full range of motion here. Smash those forearms onto the bicep. Press down. Ah. Oh. Ah. Squeeze on the bottom. Pump some extra blood in there. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, buddy. Sixties off. I just want to feel them, you know. Just want to touch them a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. 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 Ah. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's good. That's good. I know I said I wasn't going to go heavy today, but I say a whole lot of things. So that's the um, Hollywood rule number one. Believe nothing. Anybody says, only believe their actions. Can't touch this. Hammer time. Do you get it? Because <laughs> it's uh, hammer curls. You see, you can't, you can't touch my paint, or just don't touch me. Across the body, see if I can squeeze some more out. Mm. I'm going to try something a little different today within the same exercise. I did the uh, seated uh, dumbbell uh, tri tricep extensions the other day sitting, and I thought, man, it would be great if I could stabilize this part right here and kind of lean into it and not have to do all the balancing and wonder if my elbow's staying in the same place. So I set this uh, soft leg pad up here, 27 mark on my rack, and I'm going to give it a go. Oh. Actually, I'm going to go 20, really lighten up, try to find the right tension point first before I work in a sec. It's going to be about right here. Oh, this will be the first set. Why not just go ahead high rep here? I think I might even need to raise this pad up a little bit. Ooh. Ah. Mm. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Oh, I got a meltdown going. You can hear that. Ooh, crisis averted. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. He couldn't find his Buzz Lightyear. And um, believe it or not, it was where he left him last. So. Might have to go the other side of this arm. Right. Mm. I can 
kind of see it in the frame a little better here. I you want to get more upright. Oh. I feel a little stretch in my lat, or yeah, my lat at the same time. My serratus. Oh. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to raise that up one and go up 10 pounds. Ah. And uh, before I do that, I actually will go back to hammer curls. One more set of that and do, well, we'll see. I'm saying one more. Maybe one more in a dropsy. Drop set. Meaning you do reps until you kind of can't anymore with a heavy weight. Drop down, do some more, do some more. You dig? Ugh. Screwed up the setup, but that's all right. Ooh ah, ooh ah, ooh ah, ah, ah. I don't know. Ah. With this a little bit, I actually moved it up two pegs, which is about maybe four inches or so, three, four inches. I just feel like I get more stability at the top near my elbow to really lock in there. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily getting more reps than I than I normally do, but I think I feel like it's you know activating it a little bit better. Uh, but probably even more importantly is it feels like my arm up top with this weight going around keeps my shoulder in a more stable position, uh, which I think makes it a safer lift. So I'm kind of like my outside leg, obviously right now is my, my right, so I'm kind of like standing all my weight on that, so it pushes, because I'm my elbow's pushing against this, and if I stand on both legs equally, it kind of pushes me this way. So you want to counterbalance it a little bit. No. Oh. Ooh. Ah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it here. Mm. Ooh. Ah. Mm. Ah. 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 Hmm. Yeah, that felt pretty good right there. I'll tell you what. What else feels good is just getting a dummy pump. These shirts and shorts muscles. I don't know if it's doing the justice that the mirror's doing on my eyes, but I like it. All right, I'm moving on from the hammer curls, and now I'm going to do standing dumbbell single preacher curls. Um, which I'm still going to do those. I was going to pair those with uh, palm up tricep pushdowns, but I'm digging these so much. I might do, uh, I just continue on these. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll pump a set in there of those as well. I may pepper in some, uh, 
lateral raises as well because I did not do those yesterday. I forgot to. Uh, Oh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, yep, ah, So I am going to do one more set of these, and I want to play with an idea I got in my head. I want to try one and a halfs on here and just see how that feels. One and a halfs are going to be, you know, half one, half, or I guess it would be one, half, one, half. I want to see, especially in this position, I think that would really keep that tension in the muscle down here because it feels different when I extend all the way up to the top. It feels like I lose some of the, the tension in this area. Almost like it relaxes a bit more. So I'll go lighter. I'll go lighter and just one and a half this thing until I can't. Just because, you know, it's something to do, you know. Uh. 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 Pretty good. I don't know if I would do it again, but pretty good. If anything, it was still feeling a little weird transitioning from half to full. I would either like to just do full or just do a set of all half reps and to stay in that deep position here on the tricep. Oh, that's where I'm feeling it all in the back there. See, this is a little too light. Uh, what I don't like about really light sets, like I was talking about yesterday a bit, real slow, controlled reps of squeezing, it just feels like in those initial reps, I'm not getting any work. It feels so easy, like I could do it all day. And then all of a sudden, you feel like you're going to fail out of nowhere. Ugh. Uh, and it would be really hard to track if you're getting stronger or if you just went through each rep one, you know, tenth of a second quicker each time and that equals one more rep at the end. And I feel like your body just kind of knows what to do. If somebody says, you know, you got to get 16 because last week you got 15, it's like, okay, yeah, then I'll get 16. I'll probably fail there. But if you told me I had to get 18, each rep would be half a tenth of a second shorter somehow just automatically because you can feel your muscle so well and how much it has left in the tank after two decades of lifting. Um, for me, it's just not a really good way of pro tracking progressive overload. Um, it's hard to know, especially as you get heavier loads, are you really going to be doing that, you know, perfect 
one and a half second descend on the eccentric. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to put that into words exactly, but hopefully you catch my drift. Did you catch it? I was, I, <laughs> telekinesis. Ascend, did you feel that? <coughs> Already feels a lot better. I'm going lighter on these. Okay, you can get a better squeeze. Mm. Ah. Mm. Ugh. Ugh. I know I got an extra rep on that arm, but I would rather get that on that arm because my left arm is a little smaller. So I am going to finish with a uh, single arm, palm up, tricep push downs because and I think I'm gonna go left, right, left, right, just continuous. These, I feel like, push a lot of blood into my muscle, and so I like the idea of finishing on that. So the, the load won't be as big um, that I'm pushing around. I like shuttling a lot of blood into the muscle, especially to finish the body part. <sighs> Oh. Ah. Ah. Mm. Mm. Ah. my face action and more tricep action. You guys are listening to me blabbering out here, right? Let my tricep do the talking, dog. Well, I gotta start with the left. That was foolish. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Ah. Uh. Do a little drop set. Take half the weight off. Back in. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Put that bad boy back on. Ah. Ah. Yeah. There. Ah. Uh, oh, I did a few more reps on that side. Stop it. All right. I got a little calf work. May or may not show you because how fun is that to watch? But, uh, Got these pipes in a little bit, huh? That's pretty good. Okay. Um, all right. Instead of just leaning against the wall and doing uh, interior tib raises, body weight, uh, I try to find a way to stimulate them with some weight by using these numbers here. I don't have one of those tib raise bars. I think they're wildly expensive for what is probably cheap piece of equipment it is to make and I can kind of jimmy rig it with this. So 
lay down my t-shirt because I'm not laying my back down on this cold ground. I'll put these around the toes of my skater shoes because it's calf time, so it's skater time. Um, oops. Here we go. So, I want to stimulate these with an efficient, short little session, kind of check it off the list. So I'm going to attack this similarly to how I do the neck, where I'm going to kind of burn out somewhere between 10 and 20 reps. Uh, just hang there for 10 seconds, go right back in, do, you know, five-ish more. I don't know if you all can see it, but this is what it is right now. And I can't go all the way down and point my toes down, otherwise those... Handles are going to slip right off, but it still stimulates these pretty well. You want me to stay, say stimulate one more time? Just did. Stimulate. <clears throat> Definitely feeling the burn a lot more in my left one. It's kind of cool because it's smaller. Beat them up. Beat those tibs up, you skinny cluckins, cluckers. All right. Great. I'm going to start doing these way more. Forgot about how good this was. Rather than doing four sets of 25 tib raises. Well, thank you. Uh, guarantee I'll get a lot better muscle growth on this, too, putting a little weight on it. So, so far you can get with body weight, you know? Even the dudes that get real buff doing body weight. You got to do manipulate some really weird angles and start hanging sideways on bars, but even then they're weighting up dips and pull-ups. You got to start putting weight on stuff eventually. Tibs, check. I'm going to hit the soleus now by doing some seated calf raise, single leg at a time. We'll go back and forth on that. I might as well just shoot it. Good. Kind of positive shin angle, knees over toes angle here. Ah. Pull it down with this anterior tip as if you're pulling it down slowly. Keep the tension. Squeeze up. <sighs> Eliminate that momentum on the bottom. It's easy to bounce off your Achilles and calf raises. This I'm getting zero work, hardly. But when I stop, pause, think about that muscle. Squeeze that muscle up. Squeeze at the top. Pull it down at the anterior tip. Fight it with the gastroc and soleus. Pause for a few seconds. Boom! Squeeze it up. That's, that's some good work right there. keep the setup here keep the burn going by just kind of relaxing but because I'm not able to let my shake my leg out straighten my foot it's burning pretty good and it keeps the burn in the muscle it's probably been about 10 seconds I'm gonna go into a few more yeah
same principles apply for the seated calf raise on the standing. Pull it down, pause for two, three seconds. Boom, squeeze up top, the gastrox, the high calf muscles. And I've noticed too, if I flex my glutes, flex my butt really hard and my abs, it really isolates those glutes better if you have any activation issues in those muscles. You feel that they're hard to feel when, and get that burn in when you're working them. I generally do. You can play with the lean. If you lean forward a little more, you'll get even more stretch in those calves, especially if you're not letting your waist sink back. So squeeze your butt so it pushes your hips forward. Oh, keep the hip core tight. Yeah. Sliding down the board. Back up here and just do a few partials. Forgot to do uh, my lateral raises yesterday. So I'm going to check my side delts quickly and efficiently off the list right now between my sets of calves. Um, this is going to be one set where you kind of force the fatigue. So same principle I've done before. I um, showed you on the neck. Do 10 to 20 reps. Burn out on that first set. Pick 10 seconds off. Do five more. And repeat that two more times. Ah. Ah. So it'll be roughly 15, 5, 5, 5. Mm. Uh. Uh. This is great for days where you kind of have time crunch as well. There's a lot of different ways to do these force fatigued sets. Um, this is one of them that I like that I've seen online. And uh, I'll keep bringing some more to you. Ah. Done. Fun little veiny time right now. gonna stay low on some parcels. I'm not really feeling this one in my calves. I don't know why. Ah! <sighs> 